Hey y'all, so before I get this video started, let me give a quick shout out. These were the first three comments in my last video. If you want to be featured in my next video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell and come show me some love when I drop a new video. What's up you guys, it's Key and Bravon, AKA Coach Key coming back to you with another video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and also tap the bell so that you are notified of every new video that I post. So as you guys can tell by the title of this video, it's time to finally do my March budget. For those of you all who are new to my channel, I like to start my budgets with the very first paycheck of the month, which for me will be March 11th. And then I like to end it the day before the first paycheck of the following month, which would be April 8th. So this budget will be ending on April 7th. I am a part-time psych nurse and I get paid every other Wednesday. So we have our paydays in there. This is the payday from YouTube. I am not a very decorative planner. I just like to have the bare minimum pretty much. I tried a little bit of decorative planning last year and oh my gosh, it drove me crazy because I just hated the way half the stickers looked. So as far as bills for this month, I do have a yearly expense here for Amazon Prime. I was on someone else's Amazon Prime most of last year and I decided to get my own account and the end of my 30 day free trial is here. So this is the day that it's going to be due for 119. I have car insurance due on the 21st for 129.66. I have a travel club membership for $30 due on the 24th, a $20 stock club membership due on the 29th. And then on the 1st of April, we have my health insurance for 165.22, dental insurance for 954, and then rent is due of $300. That's something that's brand new, and I actually don't know if I'm gonna have to start paying that here or in May, but I'd rather just start putting in my, in my budget now to be. I'd rather be safe than sorry, y'all. Things are just kind of shifting all over the place. They're shifting fast, and I'd rather just account for it than not account for it, and then it messes my budget all up. So. I have already done my due diligence by writing everything in on this page here. I'm going to zoom you guys in. Okay, so if you are new to my channel, I use my own budgeting method called the income allocation method. I came up with this myself. This is how I was able to get out of debt. I eliminated over $26,000 in debt while saving $17,000 at the same time, and I did it in 18 months. The reason why I use my own method is because I didn't like a whole lot of other ones out there, um, mainly because I like to save at the same time as paying off debt. But also um, the biggest difference is that I do not start to allocate money um, to keep in my checking account for variable expenses like gas, groceries, things like that. And I don't allocate money for savings and extra debt payments if I was still in debt until I have earned enough money to pay for my fixed expenses. I still pay my fixed expenses, my bills as they come during the month. I don't pay them early or anything, but I just feel like it's not safe to start doing all of this extra stuff until you've earned enough money to cover your fixed expenses because at the end of the day, we can usually scrounge up $50 or something like that for a week's worth of food. But then when it comes to bills, we're just like, oh, I could just let that go. I don't know why that's the mentality. $50 is $50, but that's just how we are as people. I've never really been that way, but <laughs> it is what it is. Okay, so what I like to do, and this is a planner I created myself um, because no other planners out there really worked for my method just because of the math that's kind of involved. But if you are interested in the planner, I will link that down in the description box. So the first thing I need to do is figure out how much my fixed expenses are total. So let's go ahead and do that math. We have 300, 954, 165, 22. 129.66, got $50 between those two and then 119. So that's gonna give me a total fixed expense amount of 773.42. So, so the next thing I need to do is figure out what my projected income is. So I get paid twice this month and my paychecks are usually 1166.38 after taxes doing just 25 hours per week. Um, I'm taxed quite a bit. I'm not even going to lie to you, but 
whatever it's because i don't have dependents and stuff like that so i get paid twice so we're going to multiply by two and then my youtube paycheck for this month should be 210.77 after i subtract the amount that i want to subtract to put away for taxes so when i am figuring out my projected income i would just like to take the taxes out of that youtube portion just because you know at your regular job you see your net income after they take away taxes for youtube we don't get taxes taken out so i rather just take it out myself and then not account for that amount when i'm doing my calculations so after i figure out my projected income i'm going to subtract what my fixed expense amount is which we already calculated was 773.42 uh oh 2543.53 minus 773.42 so that's going to give me a net income of $1,770.11 from there that's the amount that I have left over to use for variable expenses also saving and then of course extra debt payments if I was still in debt so at this point what I want to do is I want to figure out what percentage of this do I need in order to cover my variable expense amount my gas my groceries personal items rest you know eating out at restaurants because I do give myself a budget for that and before I could do that, of course, I need to first total up that amount. So I have 300 for groceries, 100 for personal household, 125 for restaurants. And I did everything based off of four weeks. $80 for gas because I typically only have to fill up really not even twice because my budget ends tomorrow and I still have a half a tank. But I am going to try to just fill up the rest before I go to work tonight. Um, just so I'm starting a new budget with a new fresh tank. So 125 for shopping, 150 for miscellaneous, that stuff like buying stuff for my niece and nephew, birthdays, just different things like that. 150 for supplements because I know I have to get my hormone balancer. I probably will need another bottle of black seed oil and then another 60 days of my probiotic. For some reason, I can't find the 30 day supply anymore. So I've been having to get the 60 day supply here for 60 days. And then we have business for 200. That stuff for my mukbangs for YouTube, um, any camera equipment, just different things like that. Cause I do have a business income that goes to a business account that I don't even account for in my budget. I don't even touch that money. I just let it recycle itself. Okay, actually, let me go back a little bit. So in order for me to figure out what percentage of my net income that we determined up here has to account for this um, variable expense amount, I need to take the total amount, which was $1,230, and I'm gonna divide that by what I have for my net income. That's gonna give me 69%. I like to round up to the nearest 5%. When I was still in debt, I did the nearest 10%, just, give, just to give myself the extra cushion for spending. So I'm gonna do 70%. And for this box, I'm gonna multiply the net income by the 70% because it's not the exact number that we wrote down below because we had to round up. So that's just giving myself like $9 extra for overspending, which I typically do not even come close to overspending. So that's enough for me. So then I have 30% for my savings. So the only thing that I'm gonna do here literally is just to take the net income minus what I wrote down for the box for checking. So that's gonna give me about $531.04 to save. And then I'm gonna also add in the 52.69 for taxes for YouTube. So let me go ahead and 52.69. And I'm actually going to write that into this little calculator that I put here. 583.73. All right. So that is my savings goal for the month. 
I did not fill out my savings jars and stuff like that because as of me recording this video, I have not reconciled my budget out for February yet. Um, it's looking like I'll probably end up saving another $700. So before I can do that, I first have to like do all of this stuff for the February budget, which I haven't done yet. So, and I'm not going to until I get off work tomorrow morning. Okay, so the last part of my month monthly budgets that I like to do is I like to do a monthly paycheck to paycheck overview because I'm someone who likes to see down the street and around the corner. I like to kind of project how I think the month is going to go based off of my paychecks, what bills come out, my budget, different things like that. And then once I actually get my paycheck, I like to break that particular paycheck down. So I, let me see, my budget is 12 30 and unlike most of the time i like to separate my supplements out of here because i know i only buy supplements once but i am actually going to keep it in there just for the sake of making it a lot easier for myself and everyone watching too so i'm just going to divide that in half which means we're going to have 615 dollars per paycheck all right Okay, so the first payday is going to be March. How do I usually do this, y'all? Oh man, this is bad. <laughs> okay, I thought I did it that way. So we have March 11th through March 24th. And that is going to be eleven sixty six thirty eight. And then over here, I'm going to do March twenty first for YouTube, and that one is going to be two sixty three forty six. That's the total amount, and then I'm going to take the taxes out of that when I do this portion. Okay, so, dang, look, don't I use black all the way through? This is bad. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that is going to come out of here is Amazon Prime. And essentially, all I'm really trying to do is figure out how much money I have left over after um, all of my bills with each paycheck so I can see, like, you know, am I going to be more short this paycheck than the next paycheck? Am I more short the second paycheck than the first one? It also allows me to see how much money I should have left over so that I can figure out like what my savings is going to look like and stuff like that throughout the month. So we got car insurance. That's going to be $129.66. And then we have the travel club. And that's going to be $30. And then we have the budget, gas, groceries, all of that. And that's going to be $615. And then I'm going to draw a line. So here for the YouTube paycheck, we have taxes and then it's going to be $52.69. That's that. I'm gonna skip like three, two, three, let's skip two lines. Actually, no, I'm gonna go three. So then we have March 25th to April 7th. Again, 1166.38. I think this paycheck might be a little bit more because I think this was another um, time where I had to work an extra 15 minutes or something. But I like to just go based off of the number that I know with 24 hour, 25 hours. Okay, so Stock Club. And that is going to be $20. We have Rent. For 300 health insurance 165.22 
dental insurance, nine fifty four. And then again, the budget of six fifteen. So at this point, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start subtracting this away from the paychecks. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. Okay, so I am done at this point. Um, so if you're someone who ends up doing this and you see negatives, if there is a way for you to kind of balance things out, I would highly suggest that you do that, especially if your negative week is your first paycheck. Um, because you actually, if you were to be negative in one of your paychecks, you always want it to be the last paycheck of the month. One thing that could help some people is if you have a pretty high rent, is separating your rent um, one paycheck and the next paycheck. So once you get yourself to a certain point, like you should be able to say, all right, my rent is $300 or well, mine is, but let's say yours was $1,000. You could put $500 off into your savings with this paycheck, 500 off to this paycheck, and then you have your $1,000 to pay your uh, rent. So that's one thing that you can do. I actually used to do that uh, when I was living on my own and paying rent and stuff like that. Okay, so let's come down here and let's figure out how much we have left over for each paycheck. Paycheck one, we have YouTube, and I'm actually... And I'm just basically going to try to figure out a plan for what I want to do with the leftover money, essentially. Okay, so I have 272.72. And then for YouTube, there's 210.77. And then I have 56.62. Two ten seventy seven two seventy two seventy two. That's gonna leave me with five forty eleven, which should be pretty close to what I wrote down. Yeah. So the only reason why you don't see five forty eleven right here is because remember we had to uh, take into account that little extra cushion of nine dollars and seven cents that I gave myself to round up to seventy percent. So because this is estimate and this is actual you're gonna see it off by that little bit of amount that you um, gave yourself for that cushion so what I want to do with this because the stock market is crashing this is like the best time to be investing to be honest with you so uh, last month I think I did 275 and then at the end of this month I'm probably gonna put $500 in my investment account so I'm gonna do 300 Actually, yeah, let's do 300 to the investment account. And then I want to do 120.05 to my miscellaneous slash investment sinking fund. And then let's do 6003 to the travel fund. And then another 6003 to my car sinking fund. And it'll probably always, I mean, I always end up saving way more than what I estimate on these because I do overestimate my expenses. Um, but more than likely what I'm going to do is like I've always been doing every single month. I save towards the other things and then once I see how much money I have left over at the end of the month, I take uh, the amount from there that I want to put in my investment account. But this month, I probably will put a little bit more emphasis on saving here first and putting that money into the market 
and then saving for these other things. And then what's left over at the end of the month, I'll probably just continue to beef up these three accounts. Because even though I want to invest, 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 I also want to still make sure that I'm saving for the future um, because you don't want so much of your money in your investment accounts that something happens, you need money out of your savings and it's just not readily available right then and there. So that's that. And I'll probably, like I said, put more money in my investment account. You just kind of never know. So that is the plan for this month. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave them down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please thumbs up this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. But other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. <music>